Before we start building bigger projects in Rust, it's worth learning how we can better organize our code with packages, crates, and modules. I mean, we could also just create a single file that contains thousands of lines of code, but with experience, you'll learn pretty quickly how unmanageable that becomes. Everything we've written so far has been in one module in a single file. Ideally though, as our projects grow in size, we should split it into multiple modules and multiple files to better organize our code by grouping related functionality together. We're also going to discuss encapsulating implementation details, which will let us reuse code at a higher level. In other words, once we've implemented an operation, other code will be able to call our code via its public interface without having to know how the implementation works. Rust has several features that allows us to manage our code's organization, including which details are exposed, which details are private, and what names are in each scope in our programs. These systems, which are sometimes collectively referred to as the module system, include packages, a cargo feature that lets you build, test, and share crates. Crates, a tree of modules that produce a library or executable. Modules and use, let you control the organization, scope, and privacy of paths. And finally, paths, a way of naming an item such as a struct, function, or module. So that's what we're going to learn about in the next few videos. First, let's talk about packages and crates. A crate is the smallest amount of code that the Rust compiler considers at a time. Even if we decide to run Rust-C rather than Cargo and pass in a single code file, the compiler considers that file to be a crate. For example, we can try to compile our code by typing in Rust-C and typing in source slash main.rs. This is going to create an executable. As you can see right here, right above text, we have main. And to run that, we just type in dot slash main. And with that, we successfully ran the code. Also, crates can contain modules, and the modules may be defined in other files that get compiled with the crate, as we'll soon see. Now, a crate can come in one of two forms, a binary crate or a library crate. Binary crates are programs that can be compiled into an executable that you can run, such as a command line or a server. Each crate must have a function called main that defines what happens when the executable runs. All the crates we've created so far have been binary crates. Library crates, on the other hand, don't have a main function and don't compile to an executable. Instead, they define functionality intended to be shared with multiple projects. One example of a library crate is the rand crate, which we use to generate random numbers. So to add this crate to our project, we're going to type in cargo add rand. And if it's there, it's going to do it instantly. Otherwise, it's going to probably load for a bit. But once we have that, we can use it. We can type in use random rng. Then we could create a function called roll, which generates a random roll, like if you're rolling a die. So here we'll type in let mutable rng equal random rng. And this creates a number generator. Now we can let the roll equal rng dot random range and pass in one to six, with six being inclusive. And all we're going to do here is print line that you rolled this roll. Now to run this code, all we have to do is roll, roll, and roll. And the next time we run this, we should get the roll back. And in this case, we rolled three threes. At first I thought it was a bug, but it was just very lucky. As you can see, the second time I rolled it, I got different numbers back. So the rand crate provides functionality that generates random numbers. Note that most of the time when Rust stations say crate, they mean library. Crate is used interchangeably with the general programming concept of a library. The crate root is a source file that the Rust compiler starts from and makes up the root module of the crate. We'll dive more into that when we get to the section that covers modules. But let's talk a bit about packages next. A package is a bundle of one or more crates that provide a set of functionality. Every package contains a cargo.toml file that tells Rust how to build those crates. Now, a package can contain as many binary crates as you like, but only one library crate at most. Every package must contain at least one crate, whether that's a binary crate 
or a library crate. Here's what happens when we create a new package with cargo and we'll pass in a project name called new project. Then we're going to type in ls new project to list all the files and directories that are present in this project. And at this point, we only have a cargo.toml and a source file. And since this project has a cargo.toml file, it officially becomes a package. We can even navigate to this new project so we can see it visually. As you can see, we have the cargo, the git ignore, which doesn't really matter in this context, and the source directory. And inside the source directory, you'll see a main.rs file. This file is the starting point of a binary crate and it's named after the package. If there's a file called lib.rs in the source directory, Cargo is going to treat this as a library crate and a package can contain both of these. It can also have multiple binary crates by placing files in the source slash bin directory. For example, if we were to create a new folder here or a new directory, we could type in bin and inside there, we could add some other binaries such as example.rs. Each file inside here becomes its own binary. Now I know we covered a lot of terminology in today's video and that it can sound quite confusing at first, but I promise that with time, it will make more and more sense. It just takes a bit of getting used to. And coming from Python, I'm going to tell you that I'm also struggling with it. So don't worry, we'll figure this out. 